Want eyes that wow? Try Lumify Eye Drops. Lumify dramatically reduces redness to help eyes look whiter and brighter for up to eight hours. So you can show off those baby blues, hazel hues, and beautiful browns. Lumify. You won't believe your eyes. Happening now. Despite a little break in the rain for some parts of South Texas this afternoon, more is likely to develop. I'll time that out for your neighborhood coming right up along with the cold front. What that means for your temperatures straight ahead. A local activist group pushing for major changes within the San Antonio Police Department. But the Police Association president says those changes could negatively impact public safety. I'm Devin Clark. We'll break it all down for you coming up. And it's the latest move to fight police defunding. What Governor Greg Abbott is asking Texas candidates on the November ballot to do. More deadly than the flu. That's what President Trump said about COVID-19 in audio recordings obtained by CNN. The president saying this back in February in private, but something completely different to the public. I'm Daryl Ford, just from the White House with the very latest in how the Trump administration is reacting. A promising new vaccine trial has been put on hold and Health and Human Services announcing a new allowance for pharmacies and children. The News at Five starts right now. It has been a wet Wednesday. Storms coming through San Antonio all day and there are still parts of our viewing area that are getting rain as we speak. It's not over yet. In fact, we're going to add more to the mix. Here's Adam Kasky. And yes, we are Ursula. It's we have a break in the action right now over a good portion of San Antonio, but we are expecting that further development as we go through the evening. Over the past few hours, most of the activity has been east and southeast of San Antonio, especially along the parts of the coastal plain and between I-10 and I-37. However, we just got some new development right within San Antonio, especially Lackland area and farther north toward Leon Valley. But let's zoom in really tight here. Lackland and just east along Highway 90, and this is pushing north of Highway 90 there on the west side of San Antonio and the west side of town. So the Highway 90 corridor just west of downtown getting drenched at the moment. Elsewhere, for the most part around the city, we're dry, but more development basically Every 15, 30 minutes, I'm expecting more showers to pop up on the radar screen. So we're increasing those rain chances again to 60, 70% as we go through the evening and even through the night, more scattered activity. So we'll talk more about the rain, time it out for your area and the tricky cold front that's moving through town. We've got some cooler temperatures. Rock Springs only at 58 right now. I'll tell you all about it coming up. It is something that could lead to major changes for the San Antonio Police Department. Two petitions being circulated by a group named Fix SAPD. Their goal? To locally repeal laws that provide protections for police officers under investigation. Protections that some claim enable police misconduct. Devin Clark explains why the president of the San Antonio Police Officers Association says if that repeal happens, it won't be good for public safety. There is lack of accountability in our police system, and that's what's causing all these issues. Fix SAPD founder OG Martin says she reached her tipping point following the death of George Floyd in Minnesota and a KSAT special that found that between 2010 and 2019, two thirds of San Antonio police officers who were fired ended up getting their jobs back. Allowing bad police officers to to still wear that badge and still wear that uniform is actually a disservice to good police officers. Within the past 24 hours, Fix SAPD launched two petitions to repeal two local government codes. 143, which gives officers certain protections when they are under investigation and the right to appeal any termination through an independent arbiter. And 174, which allows for a collective bargaining agreement similar to a union contract. It's actually sad because a lot of these issues we can resolve at the negotiating table. Antonio Police Officers Association President Mike Helley says he welcomes dialogue on ways to improve police and community relations, but claims repealing the codes could have a detrimental impact on public safety. That's because he says many officers would quit. If you um, remove the contract and you remove the pay and benefits, then they're actually taking a massive pay cut. Martin says repealing the codes does not affect the ability to negotiate police officer salary and pointed out that airport police and park police are not protected by the government codes. She feels the only SAPD officers who would quit are the ones with bad intentions. Now the petitions will need tens of thousands of signatures and only then will the possible repeals be put before San Antonio voters in the May 2021 election. We have details right now on that. 
at KSAT.com. And in the meantime, today, Governor Greg Abbott announced that he's calling on all candidates to pledge against any police budget cuts. Reporting outside of Public Safety Headquarters, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. The mayor of New Braunfels responding today to an image of a Black Lives Matter flag being dragged under a truck during a Trump rally over the weekend. It's a story we first told you about on the news at six yesterday. In a statement, Mayor Rusty Brockman says in part, quote, in recent days, New Braunfels has experienced divisiveness. A group of residents have been holding a weekly event which organizers describe as a patriotic demonstration to spread the positive message about the current president. Some images and social media posts associated with that demonstration have caused angst and uneasiness in our community. The organizers of the Trump train NB have assured me that anyone who joins the organization with the purpose of spreading a message of hate is not welcome. End quote. Again, that's a statement from the mayor of New Braunfels. Yesterday, we spoke with Steve C, founder of the Trump train New Braunfels, about the controversial photo. You can read the full story right now on KSAT.com. New at five, a short chase on the city's south side ended with a man in handcuffs. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says a deputy ran the plates on the driver's vehicle. They came back stolen. They tried to pull him over, but he refused to stop. After about 10 minutes, the chase ended on Lovett Avenue. The driver had a warrant for his arrest. He was charged with evading arrest with a motor vehicle. A passenger was let go. One woman is dead. Another woman is recovering. The shooting suspect remains on the run tonight. We're still working to learn the name of the woman who died. The victims were found at an abandoned house on Ferris Avenue near Martin Luther King Drive just after midnight last night. San Antonio police believe they were with a group of people when shots were fired. One woman died at the scene. The other taken to the hospital. She's in critical condition. Police say no one, including the surviving victim, could give any information about the shooting, though. They did find shell casings from two guns and one gun nearby, but they did not find the suspects. We're also working to identify a 26-year-old man who died in a crash this morning. It happened around 6 o'clock along Loop 1604 and Stone Oak Parkway on the north side. San Antonio police say slick roads caused two vehicles to hydroplane. One driver lost control and hit other vehicles. He died at the scene. No other injuries reported. The wreck shut down the westbound lanes of 1604 for several hours. They have since reopened. We're also working to identify a motorcyclist who died on the northeast side last night. San Antonio police say the victim rear-ended a minivan while speeding on Nacogdoches near Judson Road. He was thrown from the motorcycle and later died at the scene. No one in the minivan was hurt. Turning now to COVID-19, weeks before the first U.S. death from the virus, apparently President Trump said he knew it was highly contagious, but wanted to downplay the dangers in order to keep the American public calm. That's according to veteran journalist Bob Woodward's new book and recordings obtained by CNN. As Daryl Forges explains, the Trump administration insists the president never lied to the American public about the coronavirus. New audio recordings of President Donald Trump putting the early days of the coronavirus response into the spotlight. Speaking to journalist Bob Woodward for a book set to be released next week, the president in February appeared to acknowledge the threat of the coronavirus in audio obtained by CNN. It goes through air, Bob. That's always tougher than the touch. You know, the touch, you don't have to touch things, right? But the air, you just breathe the air. and That's how it's uh, passed. And so that's a very tricky one. That's a very delicate one. Uh, it's also more deadly than your, you know, your even your strenuous flus. During that same time in public, the president said the disease was very much under control and cases would disappear. As of Wednesday, the U.S. has over 6.3 million known cases of COVID-19. The president also told Woodward this in March. Well, I think, Bob, really, to be honest with you. Sure, I want you to I be. wanted to... Uh, I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. It's just another political hit job, but whether it was Woodward or anybody else, you cannot show a sense of panic or you're going to have bigger problems than you ever had before. Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden went right after President Trump. He knew how dangerous it was. And while this deadly disease ripped through our nation, he failed to do his job on purpose. I think we've done from every standpoint a, a incredible job. 
mind, after the president made those comments, when it comes to what happened afterwards, the president actually held six rallies after he made those comments in February and in March. Now, top Senate Republicans are defending the president's comments, while others, like Senator Mitt Romney, calls the president and his actions that he has, quote, no moral compass. Live at the White House, Daryl Forges, Ursula, back to you. Thank you so much, Daryl. A rapid development of a COVID-19 vaccine has been a concern over the last few months and now a potential setback in the race to find a cure. ABC's Romina Puga explains. One of the drug companies working on a COVID vaccine hit a roadblock this week as it investigates a patient who had a possible adverse effect. AstraZeneca and Oxford University, who are in phase three trials, are hitting pause as they investigate what caused the illness and whether it was connected to the vaccine. Infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci on CBS News this morning saying pauses such as this are not uncommon. Well, I think it's important to point out that that's the reason why you have various phases of trials to determine if, in fact, these candidates are safe. And then you proceed cautiously as you go forward. It's really one of the safety valves that you have on clinical trials such as this. Just yesterday, nine drug companies, including AstraZeneca, put out a joint statement pledging that safety will be their top priority when releasing a final vaccine. Meantime, college campuses are dealing with the influx of corona clusters as students return to class. Mississippi's health department reporting that 18 and 19 year olds are leading in COVID cases in the state. We have people who are dying. Schools want to stay in session. Colleges want to stay open. And just to have such little patience and to have such little restraint that you can't do. I mean, if someone's having a party, don't go. And in regards to children and a potential vaccine, the Surgeon General announced today that whenever those vaccines are made available, HHS will allow licensed pharmacists to administer them to children ages three and up. In North Carolina, Romina Puga, ABC News. New at five, the pandemic taking a toll on businesses across the city, including SeaWorld San Antonio. Today, we learned the company filed paperwork to lay off 242 employees on September 4th. Park President Byron Surrett attributes the layoffs to the park not being able to fully recover since it reopened in July. He says limited operations combined with consumer concerns over COVID-19 are big factors. The head of an advisory board for the city's trails system now confirmed about concerned rather about the future. The expansion of the Howard W. Peak Greenway Trails system, as well as the Edwards Aquifer Protection Program, funded by a one eighth cent sales tax that expires next year. But unlike previous years, this tax won't be up for renewal. Instead, voters will be asked to consider using it for workforce development and transportation instead. These are much needed programs. Um, but it feels like the rug is being pulled right out from under this beneficial program, and uh, I'd like to see it continue. There are plans to keep both the aquifer program and the trail system going. Bear County has been considering funding the trails expansion, but the county manager has recommended holding off on any new capital projects until they see what next year's property tax looks like. Two minutes, twice a day. Brushing your teeth properly can be the difference between an unplanned trip to the dentist during a pandemic or not. And electronic toothbrushes have put a spin on keeping your pearly whites clean. We're going to put them to the test after the break. And we have new storms developing right over San Antonio. We'll take a close look at those. And a big story for tomorrow will be temperatures. Your readings all depends on your location. There's going to be a big difference across South Texas. I'll break it all down for you coming right up. New at five, taking care of those pearly whites. Dentists agree that brushing teeth for two minutes twice a day is the best way to do it, but studies suggest an electronic toothbrush may help keep your teeth even cleaner. 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris with toothbrush testing. Mom, can you please have me the toothpaste? Kelly Starzik is teaching her son good brushing habits. I like the electric toothbrush because I admittedly am not always the best flosser, but my dentists think I am. Some studies show using a powered toothbrush might reduce plaque in cases of gingivitis and lead to better gum health. Prices range a lot, so Consumer Reports put a batch to the test. Our volunteers were told to skip brushing or using other dental products for eight hours. We then had a dental hygienist check their plaque levels. 
They brushed for two minutes and the hygienist measured again. Using those comparisons and tests on batteries, ease of use and noise, CR scored the electric toothbrushes. The top rated one, this model from Oral-B. A cheaper option that also did well, this one from Philips Sonic Care. Whether you use a pricey powered brush or just a simple one, experts say the way you brush matters. Angling your brush at 45 degrees. And try not to brush too hard. That can actually do more harm than good. Did you get your back teeth? Oh, yeah. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. We want to take you out to some late breaking news. Sky 12 is checking out a report of a police chase that ended in a crash on I-10 and Foster Road. Yeah, we're working to get more information on that. You can see they're also scanning the sky for rain clouds. Those not so hard to find right. this afternoon, Adam. No, that's pretty easy to find there. You can see the downpours off in the distance from Sky 12, and there are some areas of some heavy rainfall that have just flared up over San Antonio. We had a several hour break. Even the roads dried out, but now we're seeing a bit of a soaking just in time for the evening commute. So let's get right to it with a look at our radar. You can see the action is done west of San Antonio. That's especially closer to the Rio Grande. Valverde County had a Big, heavy, good soaking earlier today, but right now that action has come to an end. We don't have any showers, really not much to speak of west of I-35 other than a little bit in western Medina County there moving out of Uvalde County. So the past few hours, most of the action has been between I-10 and I-37 here, especially Wilson and Carnes counties and Carnes County, especially right now down into B County is seeing some of that heavy rain, a little bit of lightning and thunder associated with that. Well, what I want to focus on here is what has just recently developed. This is a one hour lapse and you see it just popped up here over the past hour right here in San Antonio. We're talking parts of downtown San Antonio and now the north side of town. Nothing on the south side right now, but you get into Alamo Heights. Okay, you go westward all the way to I-10, uh, Woodlawn Lake Park area as well included there, and then northward. And this activity is some heavy rainfall. It's pretty brief, though. It's not lasting all that long, and it's pushing off to the north at about 15 miles per hour. You get outside 1604, and there's still some of that action, basically the rim up toward the Dominion area. Put this into motion, and I'd say... You know, put it into motion and uh, give it about 30, 45 minutes and you could actually see it in Bulverde moving through from uh, 1604 through Stone Oak and then next up Timberwood Park and Bulverde. Otherwise, nothing really uh, to speak of elsewhere across town and otherwise just some little bit of activity there in Atascosa County here. I want to show you this as well in terms of rainfall accumulations and over the past 48 hours, it's been good. Valverde County, Edwards County, very, very good rainfall accumulations. We're talking three, four, five inches in at least estimated by the radar, even within San Antonio. Zooming in here, this is Bandera Road, 16 on the left hand side. If you're near Hollyhock Road. Eckert Road, that's near Hebner there, west of I-10. Radar estimates, three, three and a half inches in your neighborhood. We had a little farther to the north up in Bernie, just east of downtown there, right along 46. Some of those neighborhoods, uh, Bentwood Drive, and you get to Esperanza Boulevard, two nearly three inches of rain estimated by the Doppler radar. And we're going to be adding more to that likely as we go through the night. I like our future cast that handles this well. The redevelopment this evening, more development westward. So even though you don't have the rain, say in Uvalde and Carrizo Springs right now, now, or even Dehennis or Sabinal, we are expecting further development and more uh, scattered activity through the night westward. And I think this computer model handles that nicely all the way through the morning commute tomorrow. Some areas of scattered rain across South Texas, including San Antonio. So a damp morning commute, but then we get into the afternoon and those rain chances fall off and we'll actually have some sun. Hello, cold front. Look at this 88 Victoria 59 in Rock Springs. Look at that temperature difference. That's because of the cold front that just moved through Kerrville, who's now 64 and up in the panhandle. We're nearly 40 degrees, so this is going to have a big impact on temperatures tomorrow, and it all comes down to location, location, location. Coolest numbers will be closer to the Rio Grande. Warmest readings will be along the coastal plain. Break it down for you in the morning. Del Rio at 59. Meanwhile, 63 here in San Antonio and 70s, Beeville and Victoria. Then by the afternoon tomorrow, I think we'll mostly be in the 70s. 
However, when you get closer to the Rio Grande, you will be stuck in the mid and upper 60s for highs come tomorrow afternoon. Best chance of rain in the morning tomorrow, then a little bit of afternoon sun and we'll see rain chances spike again by Sunday and Monday and temperatures. Well, they recover pretty quickly as they often do this time of year. All right, it's going to be weird to be in the 70s tomorrow. It's going to be weird 60s, and wonderful. 50s. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah. All right, kickoff coming and some contracts getting done. Yeah, Zach Martin, they reworked his contract. The question is why. When we come back, we'll tell you what they've done. And Baylor's season opener is off. Coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans will kick off the 2020 NFL season tomorrow when they face the Chiefs in Kansas City. Their game against the defending Super Bowl champs will pit two of the league's top quarterbacks against one another. Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes, not just because of their talents on the field, but their paychecks as well. Between them now, $660 million plus. Mahomes agreeing to a 10-year contract with KC that could top $500 million, and Watson four years, $160 million. Now they have to go out tomorrow and prove they're worth the investment. You know, just because I got it, you know, the, the money is there and, you know, I just go out there. And I, I want to win a Super Bowl, so I'm doing whatever I can to win a Super Bowl, not, you know, necessarily live up to a hype of a big time contract. My idea, my goal is to be, you know, have that ring next year and sitting right beside you. You know, when we pop in champagne. So that's what I want to do <laughs> next all season. There you go. Meantime, the Dallas Cowboys kick off their season this coming Sunday when they travel to Los Angeles face the Rams and help open their brand new SoFi Stadium. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, all preseason games are canceled and therefore no players have gone through any game action. In other words, no tackling yet. So what would it be like to be hit for the first time on opening night? It feels so weird. We were talking about the other day. We are like, Dude, what's it gonna feel like when you just get like rocked <laughs> like, the first time you get tackled? So it's like, well, we've been doing like some kind of like, you know, half speed mat drills where it's like the offense has a ball in their hand, defense is coming through and tackling. But I mean, we're tackling on a mat, so it's like, it'll probably feel good, honestly. Like once you get tackled for the first time, it's like, oh, okay, there we go. It's like out of the way. It's like, it's like the first play of every game. It's like, you know, just get that first hit out of the way, and it's like you find your groove. All right, the Cowboys have restructured the contract of All-Pro and Pro Bowl lineman Zach Martin to free up $8 million. Question right now, why? UTSA head coach Jeff Trader says he'll be missing at least eight players when they kick off their season against Texas State on Saturday in San Marcos. He gave us an update on the 13 players that had been missing this week due to the COVID-19 and antibody test. Trader tells us he got four players back today and is waiting to hear about a fifth for their season opener on Saturday. But keep in mind, they still have two more tests to go through tomorrow and Friday. And the Baylor Bears have canceled their season opener against Louisiana Tech, slated for this Saturday after 38 members of the Louisiana Tech football team tested positive for the coronavirus in the wake of Hurricane Laura. The section of the nation lost power for days, forcing players to adjust their social distancing. As a result, the increase in the COVID-19 positive results. So that's not a good sign for college football to start off with. It is not. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. All right, so we do have some areas of rain popping up over parts of San Antonio, mainly on the north side of town and even around 1604 and uh, 281 up I-10 as well. Tomorrow, temperatures depend on location. 80s near the coast, 60s closer to Del Rio, but we rebound quickly with best chance of rain tomorrow in the morning. We'll see you at 6. We'll see you